All right, let's move on to acceleration. Acceleration is simply the change in velocity during a specific time interval. That means that your velocity is changing within a certain amount of time. Like velocity, acceleration is also a vector. It has a magnitude, an amount, a number that you can calculate, but it also has a direction. In other words, an object has to be accelerated in a certain direction. It can't be accelerated to nowhere. So I want to show you uh, how acceleration works here, but first I'd like you to pay attention to these symbols. This represents a big or a large positive velocity. So this arrow going towards the right uh, is positive and it's big, so this is a big positive velocity, whereas this fellow here is a small positive velocity. He's going to the right, but he's a much smaller arrow. Now contrast this with this fellow. This is a big velocity in the negative direction. In other words, we're heading towards the left. And this one here is a small negative velocity, also heading towards the left, but a much smaller amount. So to understand the difference between what's positive and negative acceleration, we need to draw for you some vector diagrams here. So let's have a look at this first one over here. And I'll tell you what I'm trying to do here. Uh, I'm saying that where we have this solid line here, that this is sort of like the, the start, and this is sort of like the, the finish. So we start at the solid line and we're, we're moving towards the dotted line. I have a vector here that happens first. In other words, here I have a small initial velocity. It's represented by a small arrow. And then something happens. In step number two, I have a much greater velocity. My velocity became much larger. So I have a short arrow here. And then I have a much longer arrow here. So this is my change in velocity. How can I connect these two? Well, what's missing is this red vector that you see right here. And this change between the two vectors of my initial velocity, which was small, and my final velocity, which was much larger, this vector, to make the connection work, has to be drawn towards the right. And so this is a positive acceleration. Now, here's another example of a positive acceleration. My first vector here that starts off is a very large negative vector, ne negative velocity here. And then that changes. Uh, it becomes a much smaller negative velocity. So we're still moving in the negative direction, but I, again, it looks like I've, I've slowed down here. How do I make this, the, the, these two vectors connect? Well, to do that, I have to have this acceleration that starts from my first position to my second position. So it must start here and end over here. And so, therefore, that vector has to be drawn from the left to the right. That's a positive acceleration. Third example. Uh, in the first instance, I have a very large initial uh, velocity vector here, quite a big one. And then something happens. It looks like I slowed down. Uh, I have a much smaller final velocity. So at first I was going quite fast. Then I was going much slower. How do I connect these vectors and complete the job? I have to have this red vector here for acceleration. And what's happened here is I have a negative acceleration. Or another way you might describe it is I've slowed down. I was going very fast in number one. I was going not very fast in number two. Last one, another example of uh, negative acceleration. Here I have a very small initial velocity that's in the negative direction. And then I have a much greater final velocity also in the negative direction. So I, it looks like I speed it up, uh, but I did it all in the negative direction. So to connect these two vectors, I need this fellow. So there's my acceleration, and it too will be in the negative direction, so it's a negative acceleration. The calculation for acceleration is actually pretty simple. Uh, acceleration is simply your change in velocity over a certain time interval, or divided by time. Uh, so a quick way to say that is right here. Acceleration, which has a vector over the A because it's a magnitude and a direction, is the delta V, which is also a vector, so the change in velocity, divided by the change in time. Now, what you might want to pay attention to is sometimes you've got to calculate what is that change in velocity, and you would do that by taking the final velocity and subtracting the initial velocity to find that change. Well, the best way to see how these equations work, of course, is to put them into action. So let's we'll do some practice here. We have a shuttlecraft that accelerates from rest to a velocity of 50 meters per second, uh, going up, obviously, when it's being launched, in a time of 4.00 seconds. What is its acceleration? 
So sometimes it helps to make a little chart of our data here. My velocity was 50.0 meters per second in the up direction. My time is 4.00 seconds. And I'm asked to find my acceleration. That's still a question mark. To do that, I'm going to use the acceleration equation. Acceleration, which is a vector, is the velocity or the change in velocity divided by the time. All I've got to do now is put in my, my missing values. My velocity was 50.0 meters per second up. And I divide that by 4.00 seconds. And, you know, what do I get? Well, we could almost do that in our heads, but if we have to, we'll get out the calculator. And we'll say, okay, what is 50.0 divided by 4.00. The answer is 12.5. Now, good question. 12.5 what? This is where we say to kids to pay attention to your units, and this is really important with acceleration. The units are going to be, and I'll just put the answer in here, it's going to be meters per second squared. Now a lot of kids will look at that and say, how does that work? Uh, wouldn't these seconds here cancel these seconds out? Well, if they cancelled out, then your answer would be meters. And meters is displacement, not acceleration. Let me show you how this works mathematically. If I take meters per second as a fraction, and I divide it by seconds. Now, if you remember back into junior high school when you worked with fractions, you would have said, all right, to do this division in fractions, I would take meters per second divided by seconds. And any number by itself is automatically, as a fraction, over 1. And you also learned that if you want to do division of fractions, you leave the first fraction alone, change the t divide sign to a time sign, and flip the second guy upside down, so you get 1 over s. Well, meters times 1 is just meters. Seconds times seconds, well, you're multiplying something by its own self. So what you're going to get is, whatever it is, squared. You're going to get seconds squared. If, for example, if this was 3 times 3, I would have said that that's just 3 squared. So acceleration is meters per second squared. The seconds don't cancel out. That would just leave you with meters, and that'd be all wrong. It's meters per second squared. This is why we say, don't just worry about the mathematics. You've got a calculator that can do that. What are these measurements that you are working with? A baseball thrown at 25.0 meters per second strikes a catcher's mitt and slows down to rest in zero. 0.500 seconds. What is the magnitude of the ball's acceleration? All right, so we are going to calculate acceleration. Acceleration is the change in velocity divided by the change in time. And, and uh, what's going on here? Well, the, the change in velocity uh, was the initially the, the ball was going 25.0 meters per second. And it slowed down to uh, nothing. So it, we're going to take away 0.0, .0 meters per second. And the time that it took for this was 0 0.500 seconds. So that's pretty easy because coming to a rest is a 0. 25 minus 0 is 25. So we're going to calculate what is 25.0 meters per second divided by 0 0.500 seconds. And the calculator, of course, can help us with that very quickly. What do I have? 25 divided by decimal 5, 50. And what are the units going to be? Well, it's going to be meters per second divided by seconds, so that's meters per second squared. And, and what kind of acceleration is this? Well, we were going at a, at a, at a positive speed of 25, and we've gone down to a complete zero. So did we speed up or did we slow down? Well, we slowed down. So we might say that, therefore, is a negative 50 meters per second squared because we came to a stop. That was a negative acceleration. A hockey puck going at 10 meters per second strikes the boards, coming to rest in 0 0.0300 seconds. What is the magnitude of the puck's acceleration? So we don't have to worry about vectors here, just the magnitude. Acceleration, which is a vector, is the velocity divided by the time. All right, the puck had a velocity of 10.0 meters per second. The time it took was 0 0.0300 seconds. Let's get out the calculator and work this one out. What is 
10.0 divided by 0 0.0300. It's 333. Oh, it looks like it repeats forever here. It's going to be 333.33 yada 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 meters per second squared. Now we probably can't get away with all these digits. So if I look for significant digits, so if I look for significant digits, I've got three in this number and I've got one, two, three in this number because leading zeros don't count, only following zeros do. So I've got to curtail this answer down to just three digits. It'll have to be just 333 meters per second squared enough to round it off to three digits. A car driver applies the brakes and slows down from 15.0 meters per second to 5.0 meters per second east in a time of 4.00 seconds. Determine the car's acceleration. Well, acceleration, again, is equal to the change in velocity. Now, in this case, I've got to figure out the change. So I'm going to take the final velocity, take away the initial velocity, F for final, I for initial, and divide that by the time. So what's going to happen here is um, uh, my final velocity was 5.00 meters per second. My initial velocity was 15.0 meters per second. And the time this took was 4.00 seconds. Well, if I do subtraction here, 5 take away 15, I'm going to get a negative answer. I'm going to get negative 10.0 meters per second. And the time is 4.00 seconds. So what is that? 4 goes into 10. I know the answer to that one, actually. It goes in 2 decimal 5 times. And meters per second divided by seconds, well, that's going to be meters per second squared. Now, the answer is negative, because negative 10 divided by 4 is negative 2.5. We are slowing down. This is another example of negative acceleration. So once again, we urge you to not simply worry about the mathematics and the numbers. You've got a pocket calculator to do that. Pay attention to your measurements, and because you're dealing with vectors, pay attention to their direction as well.